Hello, it's Matt Linklater here. I want to share a story with you that happened to me yesterday. Uh, a lady called in the office from a magazine and wanted to do an article and wanted to interview me. And she said, how do you train on body language? I know you guys do sales training. And what do you do to train people on body language? And, uh, you know, she said, in your presentation uh, training class, do you, uh, do you guys uh, tape them and then tape them again and say, look, in this one, your body language looks nervous. You, you need to stop doing this or stop, start doing that. And I said, well, if you do that, if you train people on just, hey, this, this habit looks nervous, um, what's going to happen is you're going to create what I call the ips. The ips are when a golfer, a professional golfer, gets up to the green and just can't putt anymore. They're too much in their mind. So you really got to understand where does body language stem from. And your body language stems from the pictures you hold in your head. Your body language stems from the thoughts that you hold in, in your head. So you make thoughts, you make pictures, you have beliefs about a situation you hold in your head, and that creates an internal state that then shows up in a resultant physiology, resultant body language. So ultimately, it's not really focusing on the body language, it's focusing in on what type of ideas, what types of beliefs, what types of pictures are you holding in your head that ultimately will show up in your physiology and your body language. So for instance, I asked her, I said, do you ever have a time when when something went horribly wrong or you did something that uh, just didn't go very well and you felt really bad about yourself and she said well yeah I said well as you're thinking about that how do you feel and how's that showing up in your body language and she goes well I don't feel too good and I feel that my shoulders are getting kind of heavy I said see that's where your body language stems from is what you're holding in your head now I said on the other side is why don't you put in your mind um, a time you felt totally powerful, a time you felt extremely successful, a time like you felt you could do anything. Put that in your mind. And she did, and she called that time. I said, how does that make you feel? She goes, wow, I feel powerful. My shoulders feel uh, like they're standing taller. My shoulders are back. You see, the pictures in your head, the ideas in your head, the beliefs you hold in your head show up in your ultimate body language and your, and your, uh, and your physical physicality, if you will. And so when you look at communication, it's only 7% words and 93% made up of your physiology and your tonality. So how do you master your physiology and how do you master your tonality? Tonality is you have to master the states that you hold inside. And so whether you're trying to persuade somebody um, in business, whether you're trying to ask your, your boss for a raise, whether you're trying to persuade your kids, uh, your husband, your, your wife, whatever it is, if you're trying to sell somebody and persuade somebody, you have to keep that ultimate belief uh, and state in your mind. So think about times that you, you were successful, that you could have it all, that you felt like you could run through a brick wall, and you will, that will show up in your body language. And so in sales, we say you gotta have that commitment, you have to have that courage, you have to have that clarity, you have to have that connection. So go out there and create those internal states, those internal ideas, those internal pictures, and it'll show up in your resultant body language and you will have more success. You'll be successful, more successful in your communication, more successful when you're trying to persuade somebody, and you'll make more sales.